Hey guys, welcome back to Past Money Playing. Today we're going to be talking about this topic up here. And uh, Kirby sent this one to me, but I like this because Kirby is the pro of having an outdated iPhone. And when I, when I first met him, I think the iPhone like 11 or 12 was out. And he had like an iPhone 4. I don't know what it was. <laughs> iPhone 6. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. And uh, that was four. Four. Yeah. And I remember... This was what last year you were like, yeah, I had to get an upgrade because it just kept dying on me. The battery, I was like, yeah, man, it's like 10 years old. <laughs> so then he upgraded. What is it? You got like an iPhone 10 now? <laughs> yeah, I got 10. I don't know. I'm doing a big thing. Yeah. But this is so true. Um, I like this one because this is a big money waster in America, is having these phone upgrades. And I know. I can already see probably the comments, people saying, oh, but they offer plans where you can trade in your phone and this and that. But the point is, like, you're still making phone payments either way. Like, you're still right. making payments to a phone and they'll hold you over a two period, which doesn't or a two year period or whatever, which doesn't seem long. But in reality, you're never paying off your phone. So if your phone works and it's paid off. That and we're, we're we always talk about prevent you know don't add monthly expenses it you know it's okay to buy stuff you like but adding monthly expenses to your budget is just stupid and this is one that I see with people that maybe show an interest in investing but they're always wanting to upgrade every new thing upgrade the new TV upgrade the new iPhone upgrade their car. This is what keeps you in the rat race because you're constantly stuck in this cycle of needing to make these payments on luxuries when, you know, rather than investing for your future and for yourself and your family, you want to you want to do you want to buy things that are just completely meaningless. And it's I like how this actually points out as well as like. People call the rich and the wealthy selfish, but they will sacrifice these personal luxuries in order to create a better life. So the question is, is it the rich and wealthy that are selfish or is it the middle class? But Kirby, you can take over. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And me, I probably, I'm going to make sure I turn my phone the right way. Uh, I probably... Uh, pay cash for my phones out the door. I'm not adding to no service plan or anything. Uh, I am of, of the belief if you're buying consumer goods, if you can't pay for them cash, then you can't afford them. Like if you can't afford them, you shouldn't be buying them. Um, but that's one of the biggest pet peeves that we have in our house is we will not go, you know, go out and buy a phone, that's fine. But we will not increase the monthly cost of living. The monthly cost of living is already going to go up with inflation. So the cost of food is going to go higher. The cost of utilities are already going to go higher. The cost of insurance, rent, all that stuff is going to go higher. So I'm not going to add to the list of monthly expenses I have because I already know it's going to go higher. I'm the guy that's calling looking for the cheapest internet plan. I mean, cheapest versus what I need. Because I don't want my monthly expenses to go higher. But the thing is, people keep tacking on monthly expenses, monthly expenses, monthly expenses. You only get paid every week, two weeks. I mean, there's some people that get paid monthly, but that's it. So eventually, you with you keep adding on these payment plans, and I think that's one of the worst things that happened to the consumer. For the business, it was great. You know, payment plans uh, for consumer goods. Uh, but it's the worst thing that ever happened to the consumer because now they just say, oh, well, I could just add another monthly payment on, another monthly payment on, another monthly payment on. That's why people have life creep of, you know, you start at a company, you may be the janitor, making ten dollars an hour. You're barely making it, but then you move up, move up, move up. Now you're the supervisor. Now you're making seventy thousand dollars a year, but you're still barely making it. It's not inflation. That's the reason why you're barely making it. It's the fact that Life creep happens. You make the money, so you believe that you have to show people you make money or you got to buy the stuff that you didn't have when you was at $10,000 a year that now you're buying at $70,000. But magically, it brings you right back up to that 
that uh, punchline of your income and then you're struggling. I mean, I always tell it like I have this conversation with with uh, people in the military that I was with. I was like, man, I remember we was in the barracks. We were struggling to, you know, come up with the $20 for, you know, a case of beer. But then we got promoted, you know, from E1, E2 to E5. And then life creep happened. And then we were still struggling. And then we kept getting promoted. Then we were still struggling. It's, it wasn't inflation. Inflation wasn't that bad. Actually, interest rates was going down during that whole time. But we had to, we believed that we had to look the part. So now, now that I realize that I've my net worth has quadrupled. I mean, it's probably more times than that since I bought the house that I live in. I didn't go buy another house, bigger house, just for the sake of doing it, just to say, oh, I gotta let people, I gotta buy a house that matches my net worth. I'm looking at it as okay, well, now I have a bigger gap from my monthly expenses to what I bring in, now I have that much leeway to do other things, i.e. invest to make more money, or I don't have to work as hard to cover my everyday expenses. Now, do we go out and get food? Yeah, but we don't put it, we, we'll put it on a card, but then we just pay it off as soon as it hits the account the next day. But we're not adding monthly expenses. We're not Go and trade me in cars and be like, oh, I'm about to go, you know, pay a thousand dollars a month for that just to have a thousand dollars added on to our monthly expenses. I'm not upgrading to the new, you know, service plans and subscription plans just to say, oh, yeah, when people come over my house, I want to make sure I got everything that they want to do. Not happening. I'm not going on trips saying, oh, I'll put it on a payment plan to go on the trip. If I can't afford it, when it comes to consumer goods, if I can't pay cash for it, I am not buying it. It's just that simple philosophy. And like these people with these iPhones and things like that is you buying these iPhones. I don't know what they cost now. Eleven, twelve hundred dollars. Most people don't even have that. And then you don't have nothing invested to pay for that. So but then you fund these companies like Apple to make them rich. But then because you funded these companies, then you want to blame these companies for the reason why you don't have nothing. You want to say they're greedy. They don't pay enough in taxes and all that. If you didn't buy the goods, they wouldn't have the money to not pay taxes with. So you fund them to make them rich, but then you want to complain because they're not giving back to you. So that's like, so let's just use this as a friend-friend relationship or family-family relationship. If you're always giving money to your family members and they never give you nothing back, you wouldn't deal with them no more. But magically, with these big consumer items, you will keep giving, giving, giving. They're not giving you anything back, but you just keep buying more and more and more and more of this stuff. Make it make sense. Yeah, I don't complain about them not doing it because I understand the business model that they have. And then, yeah, I usually buy iPhone. My next iPhone upgrade, when iPhone gets to buy iPhone 20, I'm going to get that 15 that's coming out next week. I'm going to get that 15. But it's got to be like iPhone 20 or something. I'm not buying it no time soon. That is, And I'm going to get it on a discounted price. But a low, 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 low. But I refuse to sit there. It, it, I mean, it makes economic sense. It don't make human sense. I mean, nowhere else in your life or anybody's life would they keep giving to somebody that's not giving back to them, but they will do it just for a name. Just for a name brand. Balenciaga, Red Bottoms. All this stuff. You keep giving, giving, giving. And, but I don't care if they don't give you nothing back, but then you want to sit there and complain that they're not doing this or they're not doing that. Where else in the world do you do it? You won't even go to work. And keep working and uh, and uh, uh and not collect a paycheck. As soon as they say, "Oh, we ain't got a paycheck this week," you gonna stop. But not when it comes to name brand goods. Not so you can feel like you're you're up to speed and you're you're doing everything everybody else doing, or you got the latest and greatest. All all consciousness, all sense making goes out the window then. But. Not when it comes to real life relationships and events. That's the thing I don't understand.
With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.